Let us now buttress the argument which we initially proposed that the social shaping of technology in contradistinction with technological shaping of society that we, we provided certain examples of political control of technological systems in the form of do artifacts of politics by Langdon Wiener, uh, technology as knowledge by Edwin Layton Jr. Uh, and now we are discussing uh, Donald McKenzie and U D Walkman's reflections on the social shaping of technology. Okay, within uh, McKenzie and Walkman's reflections on the social shaping of technology, we have already discussed Hughes' electric light. I mean, Hughes the way he uh, dwelt upon Edison and his electric bulb, the invention of electric um, light and many other things. I mean, uh, we have discussed um, uh, Haraway's reflections on um, uh, cyborg, cybernetic organism, feminism and technology, uh, uh, ethnicity and technology, actor network theories, caught social construction of technological systems okay, and so on. Now, <coughs> we will have to buttress, we will have to strengthen the argument from the classical writings, maybe Karl Marx, maybe Harry Braverman and so on. We are trying to analyze in this lecture certain excerpts from Marx's writings on the machine versus the worker, certain excerpts. Okay. The instrument of labor strikes down the labor. This, this direct antagonism between the two, okay? I mean the machine as well as the laborer or the worker okay? came out most strongly when newly introduced machinery competed with handicrafts, hand looms, handicrafts. Okay? They uh, had a conflicting interest with power. Hand looms, handicrafts, they were manually woven, manually made, whereas power loom is a, is a uh, product which is handled by a machine. It is a machine mode product okay? uh, and that is how we, we have come to uh, a point where we will find that uh, hand looms and handicrafts on the one hand and the power loom on the other historically and materially okay, they, are, they are at loggerheads with each other not simply as a technological system, but also as a technological system which is very, um, very much socially, economically, politically, culturally. Uh, embedded. Okay. In this sense, but even in modern industry, okay, the continual improvement of machinery and the development of the automated system has the same effect. Okay. The object of the improved machinery is to diminish manual labor by the aid of an iron instead of the human apparatus. The, the adaptation of power to machinery heretofore moved by hand is almost of daily occurrence. The minor improvements in machinery having for their object economy of power, the production of better work, the turning of more work in the same time or in supplying the place of a child, a female or a man are constant and although sometimes apparently of no great movement have somewhat important results. Okay. Whenever a process requires a peculiar uh, a dexterity and steadiness of hand, who is prone to irregularities of many kinds and it is placed in charge of a peculiar mechanism, okay, so self-regulating that a child can superintend it. Okay. That is how 
that is how if you if you look at even um, um, uh, Charlie Chaplin's modern times, if you look at um, Henry Lefebvre's critique of everyday life, okay, you will find different things. A man, a, a, an individual, a man, I, I say, I mean uh, an individual, I mean uh, a man or a woman, okay, an individual is reduced to a machine. That is how C or he gets alienated from the work that C or he does. It amounts to human alienness. That is how I lose my own self to be reduced to a machine, to be reduced to a technology. Okay? If you look at modern times by Charlie Chaplin, how assembly line production, how large scale production has reduced individual workers to uh, to machines. Okay? Individual workers do not remain, do not tend to remain as individual workers, rather they are reduced to machines in the context of assembly line production as, uh, ex as was examined by Marx. Okay? Even you can uh, look at this, uh, you can look at this phenomenon even in 2017 when, you, when we talk about Walmart. In Walmart also, you will find that uh, individual workers have been reduced to machines. Okay? But, but machinery not only acts as competitor who gets the better of the workplace and is constantly on the point of making them superfluous. Okay? It, is, it is also a power inimical to them. Okay? And as such, capital proclaims it from the rooftops and as such makes use of it. It is the most powerful weapon for repressing strikes, those periodical revolts of the working class against the autocracy of capital. Okay? Machine does so in a manner that you will find it has reduced the power of the striking capacity of the working class. Okay? And, 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 in, and as such capital and, and as such it has become machinery, machinery has become the most powerful weapon for repressing strikes, those periodical revolts of the working class against the autocracy of capital. It has repressed the individual's capacity to interrogate, individual's capacity to dissent individuals freedom to dissent whenever we talk about democracy it, it cannot be reduced to only equal opportunities of work equal opportunity they are, they are very important but whenever we talk about democracy freedom to dissent is very much integral to the idea of democracy this is very important if i cannot have if i do not have the freedom to dissent okay then then there is no meaning of democracy in any any setup. That is why freedom to dissent, I repeat freedom to dissent is integral to the idea of democracy. Okay? Uh, for example, the, the, the steam engine, I mean staying on with how machinery not only acts as a competitor who gets the better of the workplace and is constantly on the point of making them superfluous, it is also a power inimical to them and as such capital proclaims it from the rooftops and as such makes use of it. It is the most machinery is the most powerful weapon for repressing strikes, those periodical revolts of the working class against the autocracy of capital. Against the autocracy of capital one must have the freedom to dissent. Against the autocracy of the state one must have the freedom to dissent. Okay? For example, the steam engine was the very first of an antagonist of human power that enabled the capitalist to trade under foot the growing claims of the workmen who threatened the newly born factory, uh, newly born factory system okay, with a crisis. This is important. Okay? It would be possible, I mean uh, one, one can uh, go on and on uh, about uh, uh, analyzing uh, these excerpts, ex excerpts from 
Marx's writings when he wrote that it would be possible to write quite a history of the inventions made mm. since 1830 for the sole purpose of supplying capital with weapons against the revolts of the working class. At the head of these uh, in importance stands the self-acting mule because it opened up a new epoch in the uh, automatic system. Okay? For that is why, when we say machines in general invention since 1830 are the most powerful weapons uh, for repressing strikes or revolts of the working class against the autocracy of capital, okay? the, the, the inventor of steam hammer, I mean uh, his name is uh, Nasmith. Okay? Uh, Nasmith was the inventor of steam hammer. Uh, uh, according to him, okay, the characteristic feature of our modern mechanical improvements is the is the introduction of self-acting tool machinery. What every mechanical workman has now to do is not to work himself, but to superintend the beautiful labor of the machine the working class that uh, that depends exclusively on their skill is now done away with it. Okay? Now, if you look at handloom, the skill that is embedded in the handloom sector in the, in the production of handicraft in the production of handloom is now done away with, is now got rid of precisely because of the introduction of power loom. Power loom does not have that skill. Okay? Power loom is machine mode. Skill is already embedded in the invention of the the of the power loom. Okay, I mean, we can we, I can give you numerous examples. I mean, uh, when hand mill was there, what Marx wrote uh, in the Poverty of Philosophy that a hand mill gives you a society with a feudal lord uh, and a steam mill with that of the industrial capitalist. When hand mill was there. And wrongly, Marx has been dubbed as a technological determinist in this sense, but he was more he was more concerned about the changes in the modes of production. Okay, uh, that's very important. Okay, when you look at hand mill, it is a marker of feudalism, feudal society. But when the modes of production changed, what became the hallmark of the industrial capitalist society, not hand, uh, not hand mill, rather steam mill. That is why uh, it is a materialist conception of history, which Marx, uh, proposed, uh, Marx uh, studied and Marx proposed uh, that uh, matter is prior to the formation of the idea. We can, I mean, we have given you examples in the initial lectures that uh, uh, how technology uh, predates modern science. I mean, if you look at uh, a particular technology, suppose steam engine. Okay, steam engine has uh, ensured, or uh, the the invention of steam engine, uh, or from from the invention of steam engine, we have come to understand the laws of thermodynamics. Okay, that's how technology changed the direction of basic research. And that's why uh, the, the that's why uh, Nasmith, the who, who is the inve who was the inventor of steam hammer, uh, uh, pointed out that the characteristic feature of our modern mechanical improvements is the introduction of self-acting tool machinery. What every mechanical workman has now to do is not to work himself, but to superintend the beautiful labor of the machine. Whether it is, I mean, I mean, uh, the, now the labor of the machine has replaced the labor of the individuals as such. The, the labor of machine, the, the, the activity of the machine has displaced the, the laborers themselves. Okay? That is why the working class that depends exclusively on its skill okay, is now removed from, is now done away with, it, is now removed from the production system. Okay?
I, uh, we can we can give you uh, I can give you uh, a few more examples. I mean, uh, how at length at length capitalists sought deliverance from from this intolerable bondage, namely in their eyes burdensome terms of their contracts with the workmen in the resources of science and were speedily reinstated in their legitimate rule that of the head over the inferior members. Okay. Speaking of an invention for dressing wraps, okay, then, the, the, then, the, then the combined malcontents who fancied themselves uh, impregnably entrenched behind the old lines of division of labor found their uh, uh, flanks turned and their defenses rendered useless by the new mechanical tactics and were obliged to surrender at discretion. Okay? With regard to the invention of the self acting mule, Uri says that a creation destined to restore order among the, the industrious classes, I mean this invention confirms the great doctrine already propounded that when capital enlists science into her service the refractory hand of labor will always be taught the shyity. That is why the, the, the working class, the working classes which depend exclusively on their skill okay, uh, is now removed in the, in the context of the kind of technology that we have uh, in capital. Okay. From, from here onward, what kind of capitalism and the kind of control that capitalism brings in uh, in its purview okay, must be examined. That we must look at from Harry Braberman's uh, uh, reflections on technology and capitalist control. The, the evolution of machinery from its primitive forms to modern complexes in which the entire process is guided from start to finish by not only mechanical, but also electrical, chemical and other physical forces. And this, this evolution may thus be described as an increase in human control over the action of tools. And these tools are controlled as extensions of the human organs of work the increasing control by humans over labor processes by means of machines thus far understood is nothing more than an abstraction. What is that abstraction? Then the kind of control, the kind of profit okay, uh, that uh, we get from the labor is abstracted from the labor itself okay, is nothing more than uh, more than abstraction. Okay? This abstraction, this, this abstraction must acquire concrete form in the social setting in which machinery is being developed. And this social setting is and has been from the beginnings of the development of machinery in its modern forms, one in which humanity is sharply divided and nowhere more sharply divided in than in the labor process itself. The mass of humanity is subjected to the labor process of for the purposes of those who control it rather than uh, for any other for any rather than any general purposes of humanity as such. In thus acquiring concrete firm the control the, the, the control of humans over the labor process turns into its opposite and becomes the control of the labor process over the mass of humans. Machinery, okay, machinery comes into the world not as the servant of humanity, but as the instrument of those to whom the accumulation of capital gives the ownership of the machines. The capacity of humans to control the labor process through the machinery is seized upon by management from the beginning of capitalism as the prime means, the, the prime means in the uh, capitalism, um, prime means in capitalism, uh, whereby uh, uh, production may be controlled not by the 
direct producer, but by the owners and representatives of capital. It is not the workers, it is not the workers who produce become the become uh, uh, the owners and representatives of capital rather uh, rather uh, it is not it is not the direct producer who is the owner of the cap, uh, owner of such capital rather it is the powers that be it is the capitalists it is uh, uh, the 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 habs uh, it is the bourgeois it is the the uh, uh, it is the rich who become the owners and representatives of such capital. Okay. Thus, in addition to its technical function of increasing the productivity of labor, which would be a mark of machinery under uh, uh, any social system, machinery also has, uh, uh, has in the capitalist system the function of divesting the mass of workers of their control over their own labor. It is, it is ironic that this feat is accomplished by, by taking advantage of, uh, uh, of uh, taking that great human advance represented by the technical scientific developments. It is even more ir ironic that this appears perfectly natural to the minds of those who subjected to uh, almost 2, 3 centuries of commodity fetishism or fetishism of capital okay, actually see the machine as an alien force which subjugates humanity. The evolution, the, uh, the evolution of machinery okay, represents an expansion of human capacities and increase in uh, an increase of human control over environment. Uh, through the ability to elicit from instruments of production and an increasing uh, range and ex exactitude of uh, response. But it, is, but it is in the nature of machinery and a corollary of technical development that the control over the machine need no longer be vested in its immediate operator. Okay? This possibility this possibility is seized upon by the capitalist mode of production and utilized to the fullest extent. What was mere technical possibility has become since the industrial revolution an inevitability okay, that devastates with the force of a natural calamity, hmm, although there is nothing more natural about it than any other form of the organization of labor. Okay? Before the human capacity to control machinery can be transformed into its opposite, a series of special conditions uh, must be met, which have nothing to do with the physical character of the machine. The machine must be uh, property, okay? not of the producer, nor of the associated producers, but of an alien power. It may be the capitalist may be the state, may be the corporate sector and so on, okay? such alien power. The interests of the two must be antagonistic, the interests of these two classes, the, 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 the haves and the have nots, the bourgeois and the proletariat, the capitalists and the working classes. Okay? The, the manner in which labor is deployed around the machinery from the labor required to design, build, okay, uh, repair and control it to the labor required to feed and operate it. It must be dictated not by the human needs of the producers, but by the special needs of those who own both the machine and the labor power and whose interest it is to bring these two together in a special way. Now, what I am producing okay, as, a, as a worker, as a laborer is not my own, it is being controlled by some alien power, by the state, by the corporate sector, by the owners of the means of production. Okay? And what kind of owners, whether it is naturally mediated or artificially mediated, okay, that is a different question altogether. How somebody 
has become owners of means of production how somebody has not become owners of means of production must be examined in a more historical and material sense okay in this the that's why that's why along with these conditions a social evolution must take place which parallels the physical evolution of machinery a step by step creation of a labor force in place of self directed human labor that is to say a working population conforming to the needs of this social organization of labor in which knowledge of the machine becomes a specialized and segregated trait while among the mass of the working population there grows only ignorance incapacity and thus a fitness for machine servitude in this way the remarkable development of machinery becomes for most of the working population the source not of freedom not of freedom working class doesn't enjoy freedom okay in this sense uh, when when it comes to owning the means of production but they become slaves of the means of production that's why it is uh, in this way this the the remarkable development of machinery becomes for the most of the working population the source not of freedom but of enslavement not of mastery but of helplessness and not of the broadening of the horizon of labor but of the confinement of the worker within a blind uh, uh, round of servile duties in which the machine appears as the embodiment of science and the worker as little or nothing but this is no more a technical necessity of machinery then appetite is in the uh, um, uh, in the uh, what what uh, what uh, ambrose beers said that an instinct thoughtfully implanted by providence as a solution to the labor question okay machinery that's why machinery comes into the world not as the servant of humanity but as the instrument of those to whom the accumulation of capital gives the ownership of the machines okay that's why i repeat in this way the the remarkable development of machinery becomes for most of the working population the source not of freedom but of enslavement not of mastery but of helplessness and not of the broadening of the horizons of labor but of the confinement of the worker within a blind servile duties in which machine appears as the embodiment of science and the worker as little or nothing machinery machinery offers to management the opportunity to do by wholly mechanical means that which it had previously attempted to do by organizational and disciplinary means the fact that the fact that machines may be paced and controlled according to centralized decisions and that these controls may thus be in the hands of management removed from the site of production to the office these technical possibilities are of just as great interest to management management okay uh, the fact that the fact that many machines may be uh, paced and controlled according to centralized decisions and that these controls may thus be in the hands of management removed from the site of production to the office these technical possibilities are of just as great interest to management as the fact that the machine multiplies the productivity of labor it is not always necessary for this purpose that the machine be a well developed or sophisticated example of its kind the moving conveyor when used for an assembly line though it is an exceedingly primitive piece of machinery answers perfectly to the needs of capital in the organization of work which may not be otherwise mechanized its space is in the hands of management and is determined by a mechanical device the construction of which could hardly be simpler but one which enables management to seize upon the single essential control element of the process okay in this in in, in from from now now from the excerpts of marx's writings on the machine versus the worker and 
from the works of Harry Braberman on technology and capitalist control, we have come to a point that that technology also serves certain class interests. Earlier we have seen how technology serves the interests of certain racial groups, technology serves the interests of certain I mean uh, technology is essentially masculinist. Okay. Technology has also become ha, has also become an instrument a tool which serves certain classes. Okay. Leaving many 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 marginalized sections in drudgery. Okay. Now, now, now let us let us take I uh, will we'll, uh, discuss two more examples and then we will stop mm, the social shaping of technology and we will move on to the information society issues and illusions by David Lyon. Okay. Now, what are these two examples? One is a gendered socio technical construction the smart house okay. and secondly and secondly what we are going to discuss it is basically uh, the the decline of the one size fits all paradigm or how reproductive scientists try to cope with post modernity okay uh, uh, the first one a gendered socio technical construction the smart house uh, is by uh, 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 and john uh, and joron burke and the, the the decline of the one size fits all paradigm or how reproductive scientists uh, try to cope with post modernity by nelly uh, otson otson okay now a gendered socio technical construction the smart house in this section we are going to discuss smart house prototypes okay what do designers have in mind okay uh, what are the components when uh, we uh, look at uh, what are the components which are kept in mind um, uh, when we look at uh, designing a smart house maybe energy safety communication uh, entertainment environment and so on but where is the housework then housework is out of sight and out of mind. Housework is essentially done by women, which is a significant relevant social group, but is absent in the case of designing a smart house. Okay. That is why smart house is a masculine construct. Then we will discuss um, the decline of the one size fits all paradigm, a history of contraceptive technologies, the institutionalization of women as the other shift in focus from similarities to differences okay the institutionalization of women as the other uh, and development of the first physiological means of contraception focused exclusively on women one size fits all must be interrogated and whether we are going to modify technology to fit people rather than modifying people to uh, fit technology what what should be done what should we do whether we should modify people to fit our hitherto existing technological patterns or, uh, um, or we should modify technology to fit our existing population okay, before moving on to the information society uh, issues and illusions. We will start with uh, I mean uh, there we will start with Alvin Toffler, then Daniel Bell, Manuel Kessels, uh, James Martin and so on and then we will move on to David Lang. Okay. Now, let us start the discussion on a gendered socio technical construction the smart house. This lecture this the, the lecture on on the gendered on a gendered socio technical construction this in the context of the smart house by any Jorun Borg. Uh, Borg points out the shaping of the innovative home of the future and the importance of gender in the process in that process. For several reasons, Burke concentrates on a specific version of the home of tomorrow, the smart house. Okay. First, it has information technology, 
that is the new technology at its start. Secondly, okay, as publicly projected, it resembles the popular scenarios of the 1980s in presenting new technologies as gender neutral, whether IT is gender neutral or not, that also is a serious question. Third, several of the big international uh, electronic corporations are already creating prototypes. The smart house, okay, the smart house is interesting because it is beyond the stage of unbridled imagination, it is already at pre production stage, a serious uh, IT home in the making. Okay. What Berg did so far as the smart house is concerned, she gathered information through the snowball method, it is a qualitative research method if one wants to read, but it is I am not going to discuss much on snowball method here. Okay. Uh, one may go ahead with this, uh, I mean if one wants to, if somebody raises questions, we will we'll address this. Okay. It is a through a snowball method that one source of information leading to another. The lack of snowball method very in, in its generality, let me tell you, sup, suppose I want to, what is that method? It is a qualitative method within social science research. If I want to gather some information on suppose Bt cotton, okay? I will go and uh, talk to a scientist, I will talk to a group of scientists, I will talk to a group of farmers, I will go and talk to a group of civil society organizations. Okay. Suppose, if I go to a particular scientist X, then the scientist X gives me, uh, provides me with some information and the particular scientist A X may direct me to go to scientist Y, okay, which initially might not have been in the initial list. Okay. That is a snowball, you, you tend to one source of information leads to another. The lack of empirical and theoretical social research, uh, which, which Berg points out on gender and innovation, particularly on the smart house made such an exploratory res, uh, uh, approach appropriate. And uh, Berg, Berg interviewed designers, producers, uh, systematically analyzed advertisements and other kinds of written material and visited the three North American test houses. Uh, describe. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, three three no North American uh, test houses. And Burr formulated three main questions, to which she hoped might reveal the relationship between gender and technology in the design of the smart house. These questions have their origins in the existing sexual division of labor. It is important. First, the material appliances are actually in the making today. I mean first, what material appliances are actually in the making today? Okay. Scenarios are not always to be trusted as a guide to the future. Second, what kind of household activities are uh, the new artifacts or appliances meant for? Third, who are the consumers, the designers and producers see as their target group? Okay. Now, there are a few queries. How can innovation be a gendered process? Is it a gendered process or not? We will see because uh, as Berg points out that it is very much innovation, uh, I mean technological innovation is very much a gendered process, it is based on sexual division of labor. Okay? And how can the smart house be a, be a gendered socio technical construction? And as a corollary, what kind of household activities are the new artifacts or appliances meant for and what material appliances are in the making. Okay. This, this, these are important. And who are the consumers, the designers and producers um, see as their uh, target group. I mean, uh, when, a, when you build a smart house, there, there are different uh, social groups, I mean involved in this. So, the, the designers, the producers, they must be looking at certain consumers, certain class of consumers. You see, the smart houses which are built today, uh, 
uh, by the designers or the producers, okay, you will find that they do not keep cobblers or panwala metal shop keeper, okay. they do not keep them in mind. They keep the interests of particular classes in mind. Okay. That is how that is how technology serves certain male folks as well as certain classes. Okay. For whom exactly are they making this new home? For which category of classes? These these three topics, these three questions, these three queries must be addressed in the research in various ways with the aim of exposing to analysis how innovation can be said to be a gendered process, how the smart house can be seen to be a gendered socio technical construction. Okay? When you look at smart house prototypes, uh, there, are, there are three types uh, which Berg um, uh, pointed out the Honeywell house, it is the automation and central control of all electronic systems. Okay. Then NAHB smart house that is the national association of home builders, the national association of home builders and Janadu, I mean which is located in Orlando, Florida, US. Okay. We will we'll, we'll discuss these three uh, very quickly okay. and then we will come to what do designers uh, I mean ha have in mind while uh, while designing this kind of thing. One is the, the Honeywell house, Honeywell is a multinational corporation producing control systems and services including thermostats, air cleaners, burglar and uh, uh, fire alarms. The home is not Honeywell's only market, but its various control appliances are already installed in more than 60 million one family houses in the United States of America. Honeywell has been interested in home automation since 1979. Its first laboratory was built in natural surroundings in a residential area, but it proved too difficult to test and change the infrastructure of the house in such a location. The, 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 the current Honeywell test house is therefore built inside a laboratory. Okay. It embodies the Honeywell products and services linked together through the central programmable communication network, the integration system. Honeywell aims to develop a flexible uh, package that can be adjusted to individual homes to suit different life situations and lifestyles. When you look at uh, the National Association of Home Builders, it is an association of producers and suppliers of different products for their home. The association has about uh, 1.5 lakh members which makes them an organization to recon with in the struggle over standardization to which we shall, uh, uh, I mean um, uh, we can, we, we shall, uh, we can, we can uh, discuss. Uh, uh, it has its own national research foundation which fostered the idea of developing a smart house from 1986, they intensified and restructured their research effort turning smart house R and D into an independent business, the smart house development venture. The, 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 the national association of home builders is located in a large long distance truck, so that it can be moved from place to place. From the outside, it resembles less a house than a large uh, caravan. The associated R and D works, uh, R and D work is carried out in a nearby building where the house is also modeled in a miniature. In miniature, the the house consists of entrance hall, kitchen, living room, and bedroom. The rooms to natural size are arranged in a linear plane, linear plan, one adjacent to the next. Each is in fact only half a room, but together they embody all the functions found in a normal house. The main focus of the national association of home builders smart house system is on the communication network. That is why it is integrated through communication networks. The whole infrastructure of the home is going to change, I mean the designers and the producers claim 
their cable system integrates all kinds of power independent of the energy source. The National Association of Home Builders, okay, they are particularly competing to influence standards for signal transmission in networks made for homes. When you come to Jana Do, okay, it is located in Orlando in Florida in the United States. It is it is owned by private investors and used as a showcase for different suppliers to display and demonstrate their various products. Unlike, unlike the Honeywell House and uh, the National Association uh, of Home Builders Smart House, okay, Janado uh, embodies uh, architectural innovations, we say archi architectronics. Okay. Its external appearance is unique. The unconventional form is supposed to express symbolically the novel thinking in the infrastructure of the house. One of its founding fathers, the architect, I mean Roy Mashon, invented the term architronics okay, to signify the designed integration of building structure and information technology. Janadu 2 as a central control unit that integrates various appliances. It is described as an analog of the human brain, emphasizing differences in function between left and right hemispheres. The interior of the house seems unfinished. It has no comprehensive style. Each application stands alone and fails to blend into the futuristic unity promised in the brochures. Uh, well, I mean, Berg points out. Whereas, in the Honeywell and the National Association of Home Builders Smart Houses Systems, the control network is designed for application to an existing structure. In Janadu, the net is integral with its innovatory structure and is thought of mainly uh, as applicable to new constructs. Okay. Having discussed these three types of, three forms of smart house construction, let us see Whenever we talk about technological developments in the construction of smart house, what do designers have in mind? One may say that uh, there, are, there, are, uh, there are technologies in the Honeywell House, uh, Honeywell house there are technologies embedded in the, the National Association of um, Home Builders Smart House Construction, there are technologies uh, embedded in Janadu. Okay? I mean, Many, there are many things uh, you can you can look at. Okay, uh, I mean uh, in Honeywell House you will find automation and central control of all el electronic systems. In uh, National Association of Home Builders Smart House Construction you will find how it is in how everything is integrated through communication networks, and in Janadu systems uh, 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 you will find uh, architronics as Roy Mason coined this term which is to signify the designed integration of building structure and IT information technology. Okay. Then what do designers have in mind? Then our, our, our first question concerned the appliances in the home of the future. The list of what we what, what one can find as testable prototypes disregarding the mere future possibilities is neither extensive nor impressive as Berg uh, uh, examines. The, the innovations, I mean, I mean integration, centralized control and regulation of all functions in the house, okay, such innovations okay, uh, amount to control of energy, safety, communication, entertainment, environment and so on. Okay. When I say energy, I mean uh, uh, heating and lightning. When I say safety, I mean uh, security and fire alarms. When I say communication, I mean information and messaging within home and between home and outside the world. Okay. Outside home. Uh, when I say entertainment, television, uh, 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 computer, media players, uh, I mean so many other things. Okay, leisure and entertainment. Environment, when I say, I mean temperature, air pollution, and so on. None of such 
parameters, none of these technologies, I mean so far as energy, safety, uh, communication, um, uh, entertainment, environment are concerned, none of these technologies uh, differ radically from technologies already in existence. All are available, albeit uh, unintegrated on the market today. All that is new about these smart houses is the integration itself, how you integrate. Okay? Integration itself, thinking different appliances in a central uh, local network variously called a small area network, home bus okay, or house brain. This is the designer's dream, therefore, integration, centralized control and regulation of all functions in the home. This is the core of the smart home uh, as a socio technical construction. Many different companies and organizations today are engaged in R and D projects for such home networks and the battle over standards in preoccupying all the big electronic farms and other contenders such as the national association of home builders. Okay. Then, but, but when you look at energy, safety, communication, uh, entertainment, environment and so on, when, but when you construct a smart house, where is the housework? What Berg points out that perhaps the housework while constructing uh, a smart house is out of sight, is out of mind. Does housework feature in the designers thinking about the smart home? What do they seem to know about housework? Okay. Uh, okay. I mean women and men traditionally have distinct and different work in the home. Housework still mainly women's unpaid work comprises the most repetitious, uh, uh, repetitious um, and time consuming uh, tasks in the household namely cooking, house washing, cleaning, tidying, mending, child rearing and so on. Okay. You will find that, that the precise activities preoccupying the designers of smart house, we must pose these questions, at least two questions. Does housework feature in the design, designers thinking about the smart house? or what do they seem to know about housework. Now, the, these are important things whether it is Honeywell or it is the national association of uh, home builders uh, smart house construction or Janadu which uh, suggests that house to serve you. Hmm? I mean let us, let us, let us uh, from these two questions that does housework feature in the designers thinking about the smart home and what do they seem to know about housework. These two questions lead us to the third question that just whom then do the designers have in mind in their uh, as their target consumer, I mean relevant social group is a term used by Trevor Pinch and Weebay Biker in the, in the context of the social construction of social technological systems to denote institutions and organizations, to denote institutions and organizations as well as organized or unorganized groups of individuals for whom an artifact has a sad set of meanings. They emphasize specifically that the social group of consumers or users fulfills such a requirement and should be included in the analysis of a uh, technological development. Women are a relevant social group in the development of smart house. They possess important skills for and knowledge about the home that should be a resource in the design, uh, uh, design process. Okay? And, and secondly, since the home is women's traditional domain, women could be seen as an important target in the marketing of the smart house. Often. Uh, the the when the designer when the when the user producer relationship is discussed in connection with technical design 
it refers to a relation where the user's competence based on task related experience, knowledge and skills could guide the development of a new tool or machine for factory or office. In a similar way, women's competence in housework could constitute an important innovative resource for the development of home oriented information technology. When asked about the relevance of users in the designer process, okay, producers are of the uh, are of uh, I mean when 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 Berg tried to interview certain designers, um, uh, uh, not to interview designers, rather producers, okay, uh, uh, not actual producers, but the owners of the means of production, okay, they 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 found it an uh, it an interesting idea. Such an interest would seem self-evident, okay. Uh, uh, after all. How can one expect a product to sell ex except by ensuring it corresponds to consumer needs and demands? Okay? But the designers have ignored the fact that the home is a place of work, women's housework and overlook women and, and indeed the things they rank as potentially most important are male activities and most important consumer group is the technically interested male. Who exactly do the producers see as the, as the target purchaser of their smart house? It proved difficult to pin them down. Anyone and everyone seemed to be the answer. The, uh, the, for, for example, the, in the case of National uh, Association of uh, Home Builders, they had at least decided to concentrate on the one family house. The others had only vague pictures of potential consumers. Honeywell see, uh, uh, they see uh, uh, the user as the owner synonymous with the, uh, with the man of the house. It is the owner who will no longer have to think about how things are done. The things they rank as, as potentially most important in the house market uh, are male activities and um, the most important consumer group is the technically interested male. Okay? As, as a consequence of which, what we come to know that, that, that the, 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 the such, um, such smart house is a typical case of technology push in contrast to consumer pull. Is, uh, it is, it's, its inspiration lies not in the practices of everyday life, but in a fascination with what? is technically possible, not desirable, but only possible. But, but we see uh, as a matter of social change, it is not simply the possibility, but the desirability that uh, which is very important to bring about social and economic changes, cultural changes, political changes. Right? There is a crucial difference between a house and a home. It is women in the men whose work and skills make the former into the latter. Okay? I mean it is the women who, who try to make home, who know how to turn a house to a home, who know how to make a home from a house. The smart house is no home. Okay? Smart house prototypes resemble their literary for, uh, uh, forerunners, those scenarios of the 1980s that, that presented home oriented information technologies as gender neutral. Okay? Smart house prototypes are one of the several kinds of attempt to create today the technical technological home of tomorrow. The nature of that future home has serious implications for women. Technology as an element in social action has the power to change or to preserve today's gender relations including the sexual division of labor. This particular socio-technical socio construction is transparently not intended to change gender inequality. To say the smart house is a masculine construct and leave it at that, however, is unnecessarily defeatist. Technology should not be understood as ready-made artifacts whose use is non-negotiable. A technology, a technology's impacts, I mean the, the impacts of a technology are never entirely determined by its designers or producers intentions or inscribed visions. Rather, technology should be seen as a process 
it must be uh, any any technology I mean uh, whether it may be a smart house construction uh, it must be seen it should be seen as a process open to flexible interpretation by its various user groups which even uh, Biker and Pinch also pointed out interpretative flexibility okay, uh, to look at the eventual application of a technology to see what users make of it for the smart house still at prototype stage we cannot yet see it in use. Despite the non fixed nature of a technology however, is to, uh, to observe its gendering in those early stages before it reaches the user is of vital importance for understanding what happens subse subsequently. The smart house is a typical case of technology push in contrast to consumer pull. Its inspiration lies not in, not in the practices of everyday life, but in a fascination with what is technically possible. Okay? Uh, the, the gender implications of this are clear technology is traditionally masculine is traditionally a masculine domain and an interest in technology is seen as constitutive of masculinity. When technological possibilities lead as they do in, a, in the social construction of the smart house, the house that results is somewhat, somewhat like, uh, like machine for living, a highly masculine concept. Conversely, okay, Conversely, decor and style are traditionally a feminine domain and creative flair in home making has been described as an important part of feminine identity. There is a crucial difference between a house and a home. It is women in the main, in, in, uh, uh, in the main domain, I mean in, 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 in the principle. Uh, um, if you it is the women who, whose work and skills make the house a home. Decor and style have no place in these prototypes. The smart house is no home. Okay? In, the, in the next lecture, we are going to discuss, okay? we are going to discuss the decline of the decline of uh, one size fits all uh, uh, paradigm uh, or how reproductive scientists try to uh, cope with post modernity. Okay? It is very important and we will we'll end with uh, uh, this, this article by uh, Oudson, Oudson, uh, that, uh, that we will we'll end with this article our, our section on the social shaping of technology. Okay?